ocean is very noisy. It's not just ships. Like all kinds of things make noise in the ocean. Everything from anthropogenic sources like ships or anytime, you know, you do construction and you have big machines driving piles into the substrate, that makes a lot of noise. But there's lots of natural sources of noise too. Like storms can be incredibly noisy, actually. Winds um, can create noise. And then of course, marine life, like all kinds of different marine organisms make noise as well. Obviously, marine mammals communicate and call and hunt using sound. So sound is very much ubiquitous in the ocean. I think the things, the thing that we're really concerned about is how is the predominance of the anthropogenic noise. So how much louder the source of, of human caused noises have gotten in the ocean since the, since, you know, the industrial Re- revolution, um, actually. So there's different kinds of um, frequencies that are emitted by ships, right? And so it's the low frequency noises that most interfere with marine mammals because they communicate on a low frequency. Um, But there are higher frequencies that also come from human caused sources, including ships that can, can also interfere. So most of the large whales communicate via a low frequency, but the orcas, for example, have it, in particular their echolocation clicks. So sort of the noise that they make to hunt for Chinook salmon is at a higher frequency. So in that case, you're actually looking at a different frequency wave that might interfere with some of that echolocation. Well, orcas rely on sound for a lot of things. And orcas really rely on sound kind of in the way that people mostly rely on sight because it's really dark underwater. So they use sound to find food, they use sound to communicate, and they use sound to socialize. So obviously more noise underwater interrupts all of those things. So interrupting all of that, there are a lot of sources of underwater noise in the Salish Sea. There are many different kinds of boats. You know, ferries are constantly traveling. There are tankers and cargo ships and Lots and lots of recreational boats, um, commercial whale watching boats, fishing boats. There's also noise from things like Navy sonar testing in the region and construction of things in the water, docks and piling. So all of those things just make this a very noisy place for the orcas to live. But they still come here because the salmon runs that they depend on are in this area. So their overlap with noise is kind of inevitable. So we need to do what we can to reduce that. And of course, increased fossil fuel exports and increased tanker traffic as a result will make it even noisier than it already is. As you create more and more noise, it essentially like shrinks the the space in which orcas can hunt successfully. It like limits it. It's almost like restricting their habitat. If you think, if you think of habitat as a soundscape, um, which it is, a soundscape is a part of orca habitat. The, the thing that's, that is really hard about that is, you know, Chinook, Chinook salmon um, are very much a depleted species. So there's not very many of them out there. So imagine you're an orca, you're searching for like this incredibly scarce prey source and it's super loud and you're, you know, you're, you're having a harder time actually trying, you know, actually being successful in finding those, those fish. So that's really, that's really the issue with noise. And then with just the presence of vessels and, and in particular, you know, recreational boats or whale watching boats that are really trailing orcas, um, you know, that's been found to actually have, actually compel orcas to stop hunting and they just stop foraging. Um, and there was a study that the Port of Vancouver did that, that said between vessel noise and disturbance, the orcas could lose up to five and a half hours a day of foraging time. So again, you know, the, the noise and the disturbance just makes it that much harder for the orcas to find, to find their, their preferred prey. You know, conversely, if you flip that around, you know, there was a population viability study done for the Southern residents that said if we decrease noise by half essentially buys us a lot of time to recover salmon stocks and get them back up to the numbers that, you know, we need in order to sustain the orca population. Uh, you know, basically the, the noise, reducing the noise piece is, is buying us time to, to actually do what we need to do to recover those species, if that, recover the Chinook. 
so, you know, there's, there's a couple different things that we can do to lessen underwater noise pollution, especially in vulnerable marine mammals, right? So the first thing that we can do is we can ask captains to change how they operate their ships. So if you slow ships down, that actually reduces um, pretty significantly how much noise they're putting out. So the faster the ships are going, the louder they are. The second thing that we can do is we can actually quiet vessels with new technologies. You know, when you build new ships, you can kind of change the hull and you can, and you know, do, do modifications to the propeller that can quiet um, vessels. Uh, for existing ships, you can also, you know, retrofit or sort of add modifications onto the propeller. And that's not as effective as, as, you know, sort of building a ship brand new and being able to, you know, think about noise from, from the get-go, uh, but it does make a difference. And then lastly, um, you know, in order to avoid marine life, we can look at sort of moving ships out of the, you know, say key foraging habitats, for example, of, of orcas, right? Because orcas are really, disrupted by noise. So if we try to avoid their habitat as much as possible, does that help? 